everybody. It's Monday, February 2nd, 2009. Today I'd like to talk about, you guessed it, iPhone software development. This right here is a iPod Touch. And this is actually running an application that I'm developing, testing. Um, this is an iPhone. They both run basically the same operating system but this one doesn't have telephony uh, that's about the only difference uh, you can't get text messages you can't receive calls other than that they're pretty much identical now you'll notice that I'm uh, I'm running this one it's not sleeping it's actually up and going um, I'm developing an application right now which uh, communicates with a Windows web service and uh, in order to communicate it needs to poll the server uh, every uh, few seconds because you can't you can't communicate with this iPod or iPhone from the server you can't just send it a message uh, and no application can run in the background so if this program isn't running the whole time it can't get the message uh, so I have to keep it going another thing you'll notice is I won't let it sleep because if it sleeps the Wi-Fi goes off after 30 seconds so if you hit the uh, sleep button to dim the screen uh, your your communications application will only work for for 30 seconds and then it will stop and you'll have to start over again which is really bad and there's no way to override this uh, functionality absolutely no way that's legal now I could do it by jailbreaking the iPhone I could do actually I could get a lot get around a lot of the difficulties that I have by jailbreaking the iPhone but if I do that it won't really be legal uh, so uh, you know I'm de developing a commercial application so that's not really an option for me you know they really there's so many roadblocks and so many uh, catches to using an iPhone for enterprise purposes that you know I'm already stretching it as it is uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, um, this is an amazing device. I mean, this is like the best handheld device ever, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, Apple is really making a big mistake in uh, making it so um, uh, restricted, restricting people in so many ways. And basically, there's two issues that they're trying to uh, prevent from causing problems and that is they're trying to protect the battery life uh, and they're trying to make it secure so for security purposes they don't let anybody talk to the device okay that's number one you can't talk to it number two uh, to protect the battery you can't have any programs running in the background you can't have uh, you know it, you can't have Wi-Fi going after you uh, dim the screen so you know it would be nice if the, if they would say okay we recommend you don't do this but if you have to you can so what I have to do is I have to keep the screen on all the time and that's even worse on the battery I don't have any choice I mean I can either do this or I can just scrap it and say okay we're not offering this service you know that's that's what that's the position that Apple is putting people in and not only that but uh, you know, they force you to sell the, your application through the iTunes or the iPhone uh, application store. You don't have any other choice. You can either, you can, add, you can put it on devices, what they call ad hoc, where you just put it on a device. But you can only do that with, like, I think 100 devices. Um, and that's not even really legal, you know, not really. They just want you to do testing on that. Uh, and you can host iPhone applications on a local server but only if you're a company with 500 employees and that's big you know 
uh, we don't have 500 employees. I mean, not anywhere near, and probably, you know, won't have for a long, long time. So, really, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple have really been doing everything they possibly, possibly could to make us throw our iPhones away and not use them. But somehow, you know, for some reason, so far, they're letting me uh, do this project and develop this application, even though every chance he gets, Steve Jobs is, you know, sticking, poking him in the eye and saying, hey, take this, hey, take that. You know, here's another little thing to screw you up. Now, uh, and if you're doing iPhone application development and you need to uh, connect to a web service, it can be done. It's not easy. Uh, I can I can help you if you need some help, uh, you know, give you a few pointers, tell you what you need to do. But uh, there's a there's a there's a um, utility that's part of Xcode called WS Make Stubs, and that's for creating uh, web service code to interface with a uh, web service. Don't use it. Okay. Um, first of all. It's, it doesn't know how to deal with objects. Okay, so you know you still have to uh, write a lot of code after you use the WS Make Stub. Second, WS Make Stub writes code that works on the iPhone simulator, but will not work on an actual device. So if you get to the, if you're developing on a simulator, you're taking a big risk because when you move from the simulator to the device, there's a lot of things that will not work, and you'll have to rewrite them. Uh, that has happened to me a couple of times and even low-level things like the the string that the simulator uses is different from the string that the device uses and this is just an NS string it doesn't have the same methods <laughs> so you know even if you're just using strings when you go to the uh, de actual device you might have to replace some of your methods with other methods so you know be aware of that uh, and what you do, okay, if you, want to, if you want to do a web service, what you'll need to do is, say you're um, developing your web service in, in Windows and Visual Studio, develop it the way you would normally, okay, and then download a program called uh, Web Service Studio. It's free, I believe, or really cheap. Uh, download Web Service Studio and start up your web service and then uh, at the top of the web service studio browse to your WSDL file load up your WSDL and it'll show you all your methods okay so then you just click on the one you want to port to the iPhone or to Macintosh works on either one and um, what you do is you fill in the uh, the uh, variables right and then hit invoke, there's a little button called invoke, hit that and it will uh, send the uh, request to the web service and get a response and then you just uh, click on the resp request response tab and it will show you the actual text that was sent and the actual text that you get back and so then you go to your um, iPhone application you know make yourself a little uh, web service client class which creates a um, uh, NS uh, HTTP request object and put that text in it put the text of the request okay then you take the uh, XML parser object which will work on an iPhone and create your own XML document object with nodes uh, with a tree of nodes because the XML document object does not work on the iPhone just the XML parser. So then you plug the, the NS XML parser into your custom XML document and uh, use the methods to populate it and so then you just go through your nodes and look for what you know look for the information you get back and use that information in your application. Uh, it's not as hard as it sounds but you'll have to create your own uh, URL uh, your, your own HTTP request object 
If you need any help, just let me know. I'll give you some pointers. Thanks for watching.